Hi. Today we're going to have a look at a thermal imager and this was sent to me directly by Diane Yang Technology for the purpose of this review. And this is the DYT Spectrum Owl and this is a thermal imager designed for the analysis of PCBs and electronics. So this is sort of on a mini stand like this, a little bit like a microscope and the focal distance for the infrared has actually been optimised for looking at small components on a PCB rather than the handheld ones which are more designed for wider areas. So a lot of the smarts for this is built into the software. I think the camera itself is fairly basic but they've done a lot of work in the software to allow very close analysis of the types of things that you'd want to look at on your PCB. And this particular set also includes this little enclosure with an infrared window and this means that when you test your PCBs you can actually do it in an enclosed box uh, obviously, normally what would happen is you take the lid off your product or off your design, then use the thermal imager, but then obviously you've ruined the thermal performance because you've taken the lid off. So this will allow you to test it inside a closed environment if that suits, otherwise you can just do it in the open area here. So the assembly is really quite high quality. The entire thing is made from, it looks like anodized aluminium. It's got a really, really nice surface finish, absolutely perfect sort of finishing of all of the edges and everything. It does feel very high quality. Uh, the camera mount itself has the coarse height adjustment and then a lead screw to do the fine focus adjustment because this is a manual focus camera. And then we've got some anti-slip pads on the bottom here to stop it moving around on the bench. And then we've got a similar material on the base here which kind of stops any uh, reflections from other sources on here and it also holds your PCB nice and steady. So the base itself is really nice and high quality it does feel like a quality piece of kit moving on to the camera and the actual camera head itself is made from plastic but the surface finish looks the same we've got the sensor in here and this is a manual focus adjustment just here for fine adjustment of the focus and then we've got a usb-c connector and then we've got the power button on the top here along with their logo and then we have an aluminium pole which slides into the camera mount. So this all seems quite nice. In terms of specifications, this is a 260 by 200 pixel sensor. So fairly low resolution, but uh, we'll see what the quality looks like shortly. Uh, the frame rate, 25 hertz. And we can focus anywhere from 2 millimeters up to infinity with a temperature range of minus 10 degrees C up to 120 degrees C. So fairly decent specs. Uh, certainly not the highest resolution sensor, but I think because of the fact that the lens has been optimised for close focusing, I think that's probably uh, sufficient for looking at electronic components. Then we have this acrylic box for putting your electronics in to test it in a closed environment, which I think is quite a nice idea really. So we've got this infrared transmissive lens, and the idea is you basically put this up to the camera. The infrared camera can shine through here and read the temperatures accurately inside the box, so that's quite nice. The rest of it is just um, acrylic, laser cut, uh, threaded and then screwed together. And then there's this little area here that you can use to feed your wires in and out of the box without just having a bit big cutout. And obviously that would normally allow transmission of air through and ruining your results. So uh, this is quite a good idea for those systems where you'd normally have your electronics in a closed box. And then there's just a few accessories also that come in the box. So we've got a USB-C cable to plug the camera into your PC. We've got a USB stick with the software on there. And then we've got a little USB temperature sensor, which you can use to measure the ambient temperature, presumably in that little box, for example. Uh, and that feeds into the software that runs on the PC. So let's try loading up that software and actually see how this thing works for electronics use. And before we do that, it is worth mentioning that they do actually have a website. I think it's primarily here to download their software because there's not actually a huge amount of technical information about the unit itself and some of the pages are blank. So not got all of the details on there. In terms of buying this thing, I think you can buy it from Diang Yang Tech directly, uh, but there's quite a few sellers on AliExpress who are selling it and it's going for about £500, so certainly not cheap. There are thermal images that you can buy that are cheaper than this but some of them don't allow you to focus at close distance and also I think the majority of the cost here uh, aside from the build quality and everything is really going into that software development because the PC application is really where a lot of the smart stuff actually happens. To test out the thermal camera we're going to be looking at this PCB that I've had made at our video sponsor JLC PCB so we've got a four layer board at the bottom here 
and then we've got some plug-on modules which are AC dimmers and some of the areas of this PCB are dissipating power uh, so we've got some DC to DC converters here which are producing some power for the logic on these boards and we should be able to see what's going on on here and hopefully evaluate all of the features on the PC software. So first of all we've got the camera as high as it will go on the stand from the actual base, that's about 150 millimeters or about six inches. And in the PC software, that gives us a view of about four inches or 100 millimeters. So um, you can't see the entire area covered by that base, but certainly we're able to see what's going on. There is a little bit of um, distortion around the lens. So you can see at the bottom, all the way around here you can see that isn't showing flat we've got a slight curvature there but certainly uh, it's not too bad and you can pretty much see what's going on so you can see that these DC to DC converters on these boards are getting a little bit warm and we can see that something over on this side is also getting quite warm just over there so let's bring the camera all the way down and see how close we can focus on some items and so now we're all the way down on the PCB. The camera is basically touching the PCB. And you can see here we've got an 0805 resistor. Uh, that's on the right hand side. That's at about 59 degrees C. Hopefully you can read that. We've got an LED just here. And you can see a little bit of the trace getting warm as well as a result of the heat being dissipated by that resistor. And wherever you put your cursor, you can also read the temperature, which is quite nice. So we can quickly see that LED is at about 45 degrees. We can see up here, the connector up here is 32 degrees and the trace is getting warmer as we're getting closer, 46, 47. And then obviously the resistor itself is about 58 degrees C. So we have some diagnostic tools available to us in the right hand pane over here. So first of all, we can change the thresholds on the colors. So if we were looking for the coolest areas on the PCB, we can bring down the thresholds and then quickly see those areas quite easily. So these terminals and that hole just there. Similarly, if we wanted to look for the high temperature areas really quickly without the distraction of everything else on the board, we can bring up the minimum and we can quickly see that these areas here are the warmest in that area of the PCB. Uh, as well as having the temperature wherever the cursor is, we can also set some specific areas that we want to look at. So we've got three tools here, spot, rectangle or polygon. And for example, we can click on spot here, always measure the temperature of this DC to DC converter just here. And it's always updating there. We're still able to read temperatures elsewhere I think we can have multiple spots here, which is really handy. So we can see those temperatures all at once and see what's going on on the PCB. Then we have a nice tool, which is the 3D analysis. So we can quickly see on the PCB of the image where the areas are of high temperature. So we can see the peaks up here. And that sort of gives us a, a map of the temperature across the PCB, which I think is quite cool. Next up, there is what's called a comparison mode. And basically, if you have multiple PCBs of the same type under the camera, as I've done here, I've positioned these two boards under the camera, which are, each have got DC to DC converters on them. And you can set up a region of interest by drawing a box. And this is one of the DC to DCs, and this is the other. And basically, it compares the two. And you can see that one is running quite a bit warmer than the other. And I hadn't realized, but I've actually fitted two different brands of DC to DC converter. And these ones on the right hand side, you can see run quite a bit warmer than the one on the left hand side. And it's plotted on the graph here, difference of about seven degrees C. Then if we go to the circuit design tab, we've got a few interesting analysis features. So for example, we've got the temperature along a line. So if we draw a line along the PCB here, you can see we then get a graph showing the temperature along that line. If I put my steel ruler underneath it, you can see exactly where that steel ruler is. And it's pretty quick to respond, really. That's quite responsive, but it's a really neat feature. It allows you to see exactly what's going on along that line. There's also another type of analysis, a graph analysis that shows the temperature of the PCB. And if we plug in that external USB temperature sensor, we can compare it to the ambient temperature, which I think is also quite a neat feature. So I think those are really the main features of this software. There's a few other little bits and bobs all over the place, but those are the ones that would be most likely used. You can take image captures directly from the software with this tool up here, and you can also record video in real time from this software as well, so you don't need to do a screen capture or anything like that. But I think what's most impressive is just how responsive the software actually is. It's able to generate these images really quickly, and particularly the ability to measure multiple temperature spots at the same time 
is a very useful feature and something which sets this kind of camera apart from a standard handheld camera. And in terms of fixed temperature spots, it looks like I was able to place five cursors or regions of interest on the screen. And also you still have the temperature reading on your cursor, which as you can see, updates really quickly. There's basically no lag on that temperature reading. And it does seem to focus very nicely on small components. So you can see we're about to heat up an SC70 part, which is pretty small. And we're able to see all of the details of that component. We can see the individual legs. So the relatively low resolution doesn't appear to be too much of a hindrance. We are able to look at some very small components on the PCB. Now we haven't been able to test the acrylic box in this video because this isn't the right PCB for that, but the LED driver boards for the studio lights have just arrived. So we'll be doing a video of those, of those in the next week or two, and that would be the perfect candidate to try in that box. And this will be a really useful tool because at the 4.8 amps that we're driving those LEDs at, it's important that we check that everything on that PCB is operating within limits. However, what I can quickly show you now is what happens if you did try and read the temperature inside an acrylic box if you didn't have this special viewing window. So if I bring it back to the application, you can see me bringing the acrylic underneath it now. And basically all you can see is the reflections in the acrylic. And then once we get to the window, we're able to see straight through the box at our PCB and then basically you can see the acrylic again. So that's what that infrared passive window allows is for us to see what's going on inside a sealed box. Um, otherwise we wouldn't be able to read the temperatures at all. So a big thank you to Diane Yang Tech for sending me this camera. Certainly it's going to get a lot of use and I think as it gets used more in earnest we'll be able to see some of the great features and probably also some of the flaws in the design. Uh, thanks to JLC PCB as well for sponsoring this video. If you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. And also a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. And until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>